Hey, what's up? Welcome to Live.BestTechie.net, the place where we talk tech, answer your tech questions, and everything technology related. Today I have a special guest on. His name is Bruce Harrison. He's a developer for the software company called Malware Bytes. They, they produce a product called Malware Bytes is Anti-Malware. And he's going to be talking to us about home security, how you can prevent uh, malware from affecting your computer, and also, you know, what it is. What is malware and spyware and, you know, the different, the different options on the market and all those types of different things to help keep you secure and safe online. So, I mean, the first question, Bruce, is what exactly is malware and spyware? How do you define something like that? Well, malware is the generic term for all malicious software. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a virus, a worm, adware, spyware. It doesn't make any difference. If it's in your system doing things you don't want it to, um, it's malware. Uh, adware can sometimes fall into it. Sometimes it's a little bit of a gray area because a lot of adware has opt-in where you basically have to install it intentionally and you skip reading the end user license agreement which tells you all about the pop-ups and stuff you will be getting. And you also can uninstall it using the, you know, add remove from the control panel. So it's not really as bad as some malware, but if there's certain ones like um, My Way Web Search, which seems to be on every computer on the planet, I've never seen right. one where I've removed it, where they said, no, I wanted that. So right. I guess you can call that malware too. Okay. So basically something that hijacks maybe your browser start page or that really digs, I mean, digs into your system and affects you from using your computer, would you consider malware? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, let's say, let's say uh, you have some kind of malware installed. Um, how, how do you, is, it, is it easy to tell if you're infected? I mean, how does the average computer user know? It really depends on what the goal of the malware is. Um, if the malware is designed to get you to buy things or um, divert your searches, it's very obvious because you'll Google for something, you'll click on the result, and you will not get your result in the link. Right. Or you'll get pop-up advertisements for things you don't want to see. And Sometimes you can tell where they're coming from, like you'll have a little tray icon with a, a little flashing fake warning. Other times they seem to come out of nowhere. Right. Uh, some of them will even send you Internet Explorer pop-ups really? while you're using Firefox. That's, um, that's pretty interesting. But, but um, the more aggressive malware, the stuff that's really bad, there won't be any signs whatsoever, and some of them have even gone to the lengths of hijacking um, Dr. Webb or Kaspersky wow. to, pre to pre clean your computer so that their malware is the only malware in place. Um, and then you won't have any signs at all because even if your system was badly infected to begin with, it'll clean it up in front of it and then install just its malware. Wow, I've never seen anything like that. That's, that's interesting. So, I mean, okay, so let's say someone gets infected, but their, uh, their computer gets infected with malware. What, what's how do they remedy the situation? What what should they do? It really depends on how um, aggressive the malware is and how um, adept the user is. Um, novice computer users com um, dealing with modern malware without any special tools or guidance are really at the mercy of the of the black hats. But um, if you have some decent computer knowledge, know how to use like hijack this or R or other tools like that, um, you know maybe have a bootable CD that you can boot to and delete things without having to worry about things resisting being deleted. And you have some basic knowledge of how the registry works and how to remove things without destroying your computer. Um, a little bit of research on Google, you can usually figure it out on your own if you, you know, if you spend some time doing this, you know, either professionally or as a hobby. But novice users, um, they're really at the mercy of the bad guys here. They, uh, the, the malicious software, just in the small, short period of time I've been doing this, I've seen get exponentially worse month right. over month. So, if if someone were to get infected, na let's say an average computer user or a novice, um, would would malware bytes as anti malware be able to help them? The vast majority of the time, yes. Um, it, it also really depends on whether or not they had any antivirus and software installed to begin with. Um, malware bytes and antivirus software are not actually the same thing. Right. Um, malware bytes is more targeted at the stuff the antivirus software misses or is just very bad at removing or dealing with in general. Mm -hmm. um, and there's certain things like Varu and Salatine and other viruses that actually patch your system files that if you don't have antivirus software in place, you're really in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, Malwarebytes is excellent at dealing with everything that the antivirus software is poor at dealing with. Um, the recent outbreak of the Windows XP 2008. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of that on Best Techie. The forums are flooded with those, with those logs. Yeah, We've had that. We've had that 100% covered in definitions for two weeks now. I haven't had to update it because awesome. We found 
we found a trick. They have a little secret um, in their code that makes it incredibly di uh, easy to deal with if you know where you're looking, and we've had it. Awesome. Um, ever since we figured it out. But yeah, things like that, where the antivirus software seems to fall flat on its face right. over and over again. Um, that's where I target my definitions. So I mean, what sep so then what separates Malwarebytes as anti-malware from the rest of the, you know, anti-malware on software on the market like Super Anti-Spyware or Windows Defender or Adware? What makes you guys so much different? Well, the Adware forums, I've seen them using our software um, repeatedly to clean up the stuff Adware misses. So even they know that we're better, apparently. Right. But uh, Windows Defender um, doesn't update very often. Super Anti-Spyware is really the only other program out there I respect. Um, they're very good software, just like ours. I'm really not in a position to say we're dominant over them. But mm -hmm. um, um, more or less, what we do that's better than, say, like the big companies like WebRoot or some of the other ones like uh, PC Tools, the Spyware Doctors, we update more frequently. And I really have my ear to the ground when it comes to new malware trends. Mm -hmm. I have, I have, um, I do research in all the hijack this forums, and I have many friends that um, do lots of uh, work in these forums and they're constantly sending me samples to new infections and if I see something new I can just ask one of my friends hey can I have that sample and they'll right. grab it me from that log um, also the, the research I do um, is really targeted towards um, the newest malware I can find I spend a couple hours every day searching through um, you know the bad parts of the internet where people are likely to get infected and uh, I spent a lot of time, like things like infections, like all the fake codecs, the bundle yeah. infections, anything of that nature that um, antivirus software seems to know about, but just isn't very good at removing or detecting. Right. Um, and we put that as a high priority. And it's really, it's paid off well so far. We've had excellent detection rates against everything that the antivirus software is terrible at. So do you guys recommend using an antivirus software such as maybe NOD32 or Kaspersky or even AVG? And um, which ABG, one do you recommend, if any of them? If I was going to spend money on uh, antivirus software, Kaspersky Antivirus or Node32 are the only two I would probably spend money on. Okay. Um, I'm also a big fan of Antiver from Avira. Right. Um, I've heard really of them. A fan of AB, not really a fan of AVG anymore. Um, they've kind of gone the bloated route. Mm -hmm. And, and know, they're sort of moving away from the free version, it seems, more and yeah. more. Every you know they released the uh, eight, eight, which you know you can only has very limited protection. Uh, yeah, for the free the version, I wasn't fond of is when they absorbed Eweedo, they did away with Eweedo's lifetime license. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. This you know I'd like to be a fan of them. I used to use them all the time long before I got into this um, professionally, but uh, it's just not they're not impressing me anymore. Another one um, as far as free antivirus goes, um, Avast from Ewill and um, Antiver from Avira are the two of. Um, very fond of right I've been recommending those two a lot lately actually so I'm right I'm right there with you on that um, do you also recommend some kind of firewall maybe a uh, Komodo uh, zone alarm Kiro or what you know a lot of people have routers nowadays like a Linksys router or Neki or maybe a D link will those work fine for most people as firewalls or should they have yes, a software yes, firewall actually, as well they will um, I'm actually not a big fan of relying on firewalls to prevent malicious uh, um, software from installing it to your system. Having um, just a regular Windows firewall and then a, a um, router set up with a non-standard username and password and uh, universal plug and play inside just the router turned off. Exactly. Um, uh -huh. Those things will be ample to protect the average user. Right. Um, those are things I recommend every day. So yeah, I'll one of the things that um, you know businesses should look at is actually having regular firewall software because they will you know potentially be actual targets right um, if someone's going to spend the time to hack into your system from the outside world they want to know that there's something on the other side they can get mm -hmm. and the average joe sitting on his computer is absolutely not worth their time right um and i really haven't seen much malware that would be stopped by a firewall either it's it's uh, it's really not that effective. Um, it, it, if a user is surfing places that are dangerous and clicking yes on everything and having their system not updated, they're going to get infected regardless of what firewall they have. Mm -hmm.